Hi, uh, welcome to your first lesson in the Reading Data module. If you haven't already completed the Getting Started module, you're going to want to stop the video and just close this video out and go back and complete the Getting Started video. You're going to want to have your MySQL Workbench up looking like mine and that video is going to show you how to do that. And so the idea behind the method of instruction that I use is I'm going to, as I'm teaching you, I want you to work along with me so that you get the experience as well, the hands-on experience of the things that I'm teaching you. And that typically at the end of each segment, I will send you off to do a series of exercises on your own that will reinforce the things that we have worked together to learn how to do. Okay. I've employed this uh, technique for, for training education for many years and it, it's, it's very powerful. It maximizes your overall experience learning something and it, it's just far better than the traditional lecture then go off and do some homework type of scenario. Okay so let's get started. Over in the left hand pane that's called the object browser what we have are the databases that we're going to be working with. So what's going to show up are, are the databases, the MySQL databases that we can connect to, and the ones that we're working with in this training course are financial health care, training manager, and train warehouse. For this lesson, we're going to be working with a table within the financial database. So to kind of expand out the database to see what's underneath you click on the the diamond and it's going to open up and you'll have the tables and any other types of SQL objects that are associated with it for for this class for this module we're just concerning ourselves with with the tables for right now so we expand that out and we'll get a list of all of the tables that are associated with this with this database we're going to be working with for this lesson with the security transactions table. If I click on that, you'll notice that I get the table schema showing up in the information. If there's more columns than that, I can size to kind of fit in, view, and whatever. Uh, having the table schema where I can see it is very useful because it gives me the column names, it gives me the data types, and it's also going to give me uh, the primary key column or columns it, in some cases can be multiple columns that make up the primary key of a table and it's going to give me that underlined. Okay we're going to create our first query and we're initially going to let the the tool generate the code for us and so I come back up here and I'm going to select security transactions and I'm going to right mouse click, that's right mouse click, and it's going to give me a menu, and I'm going to select select rows, limit 1000. And what that's going to do is the tool's going to build a very simple select statement for me, and it's going to return the first 1000 rows, assuming that there's a 1000 rows in this table. I believe this one only has 297 rows in it, but it's going to return up to 1000 rows within the table. Now the fact that the tool inherently is going to limit what it returns back to the first thousand rows is really a safety mechanism on part of the tool. If we examine this SQL statement as it's written, if you run this SQL statement as it's written outside of this tool, it's going to return all of the rows in the table. and and so if you're working per se let's say in a production system and there's five billion rows in this table <laughs> and you execute this statement you're going to return asked to return five billion rows of data and you're probably going to have a pretty hacked off DBA you know after they kill the uh, the process that the query is running in once they realize that it's pegging the disk process and the CPU, you're probably going to get a nasty call from them. So it's important 
that when you write a query that you're cognizant of the area you're working with and that you have some notion of how much data that you're asking to be returned. And if you're looking at a table for the first time, it really is a good discipline, even though this tool is, is doing it for you, to add the limit keyword and return to explicitly specify, OK, I want you to return only this many rows of data back. OK. So it, it, it's a very important point for you to understand. Very important. And since it's already returning a thousand rows back, what we'll do is we'll change this. Whoops, we'll change this limit statement back, and we'll say return back the first. Return back ten rows of data for me. And to re-execute the query, you got the little lightning bolt third icon over. You click on that, and it'll return back the first ten rows of data. You can also resize this pane to kind of fit things in to the area that you want to that you want to view. Next, I want to talk about the select statement and kind of walk you through and talk about the syntax that goes to make up a select statement. So, a select statement, the first thing that's going to follow right after the select keyword are the columns that you want to return. And the asterisk basically says, return them all. Return all the columns for me. And that's handy if you're doing some analysis and you want to look at all of the columns in, in the database. But typically, you're going to specify the specific columns that you want to return. And, and the reason for that is it just makes things the query a little more understandable, a little more readable for someone else that's coming along. So for example, this query could be embedded in a host language program. And if all the programmer that's having to work with it sees is select star, they really have no context for what the data is unless they look at the rest of the code that's referencing it. If I'm writing a report and I have select star I really have no idea until I run the report of what's being returned. So select star is is really meant to be used. It's kind of a lazy feature and it's meant to be used if you're if you're going to do data analysis. Okay. The from statement then says, okay, I want these columns, but where do I want them from? And the syntax is database dot table. So in other words, this one is saying select all the columns from the security transactions table in the financial database. So financial dot security transactions. And then we've added the limit statement on the back end. So now you're kind of now you should be familiar with very rudimentary SQL syntax, at least what we've covered up to this point in time. Next, I want to talk about formatting your code. Formatting your code. So, with a simple one liner like this, formatting codes, it's fine on one line. You can read it, you can see it, everything's good. But as you start to write queries that are more robust, that have more code, it's important that you format your code in a way that's readable. And I'm a real stickler. I'm a real stickler for that. I some people are very much zealots on, well, it needs to be formatted this way and only this way. Uh, not so I'm not really in that camp, but I am in the camp that if you give me a query that you say, hey, Eric, can you look at this? You really need to have it formatted in a way that's presentable, that's easy for me to read. And it's just, it's just good form and practice. So let's take a look how we're going to do that. And we're going to use another function that's available in the MySQL Workbench tool. This thing, it looks like a broom here, the Beautify. We click on that, and this is going to set up and initially format our code and you can see 
it just places each of the keywords kind of on their own line makes it a little bit more readable and that'll become apparent as we start to build queries that are uh, much more robust in nature next I want to show you uh, a couple nice features associated with the uh, with the grid below that returns our record set I'm gonna change our we're gonna change our limit statement back to a thousand so we get more rows back and we're gonna re-execute our query and down in the grid you'll notice it's very spreadsheet like where we have our columns you'll also hear these referred to as fields and that's a totally appropriate name so rows and columns very similar to kind of a spreadsheet paradigm if I want to inherently sort or order the data I can do so by clicking on the column name and you can see it'll it'll automatically sort it for me in ascending or descending order so that's kind of a, a, a handy feature I'll be showing you later down the road in code how to how to sort the table based on doing it within in, in code itself. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change our select statement and ask for a the ask explicitly for certain columns. So I want to return the the trans date, the transaction date, the description, the quantity and the symbol, but I want to see the symbol before the quantity. So let's do that next. and I delimit the column names within my list by adding a comma and I said I wanted symbol before quantity and then uh, quantity and notice the very last column name in the select statement you don't have a you don't have a comma alright now I'm gonna rerun the query and you'll notice my record set changes and I'm going to get back the rows in the order that I've ordered them up in my select statement okay for this segment uh, that's all I've got so your your mission is to get your query looking just like mine executed have the record set take a break if you need it and then start the next video where we're gonna pick up where we left off here okay I'll see you in a few bye